This evening we'll take our text from St. John, John chapter 6, reading verse 35. And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. Growing up, my wonderful mom baked bread for us. It seems like it was on a daily basis, but if it wasn't every day, it was every other day. She loved to do it. There's 10 kids in the family, so when she did it, there was a lot of bread to be baked. One of my favorite things to do as a kid is to come home and to, before we would even walk in, to be able to smell that bread. My wife bakes bread. My father-in-law got her a bread maker, and as you can tell, we not only smell it, but we eat it. <laughs> How many here like bread? All right. I'm in a good, good company here. You know, uh, different cultures have their own unique take on bread. There's all kinds of bread. There's uh, French bread. There's pitas, tortillas, biscuits, sourdough, good old American sliced bread. You know, uh, bread is mentioned throughout the Bible. If you look in the Old Testament, we know before the Israelites were delivered from Egypt, God requested that would, they would bake bread right at Passover in Exodus. The Bible speaks of bread. Jesus, when he was tempted and was very hungry, and the devil came to him and offered him and told him, turn these stones into bread. Jesus said unto him, it is written that men shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. When Jesus taught his disciples to pray, he told them, to ask God to give us this daily bread. We thank God for bread. In our, in our text here, at this time, Jesus was teaching, and Jesus was doing what Jesus did, miracles. And the Bible tells us that a great multitude were listening to Jesus, and he saw what they saw what Jesus performed. And the Bible says that it was time for them to eat, and there was a great multitude of people. If you read the, there at the beginning of John chapter 6, it tells us that there were thousands of people there, a large, large crowd. And, and uh, Jesus, at one point, he realized that these people needed to eat. And uh, the Bible says that he came to Philip. You know, Jesus had a sense of humor, too, because uh, the Bible says he tested Philip and asked Philip, hey, we should feed these people. And, and, and think of uh, what, what Philip's reaction to what Jesus was requesting. And he told Jesus, there is no way this is possible with the resources that we have. 
And, and Jesus performed an amazing miracle. You know, it's, it's easy to just kind of read through Scripture and you just kind of, you know, read through there. And it's easy to just kind of glim over things. But when you stop and think about it, that Jesus could feed 5,000 plus, some people think 10,000 to 15,000 people, with five loaves and two fishes. But he did. Jesus did it. And, and it was a light thing for him to do it. And the Bible says that these people that ate, I, I wonder what kind of bread it was. I wonder what it smelled like and what it tasted like. It must have been really good. And we know it must have been good because the following day, that same crowd that Jesus fed, the Bible says that they sought for him and they looked for him. And, and not only that, they, they actually took action and they got in their boats and went over the sea looking for Jesus and they found him. They found him and his disciples there and they came to him. And again, they asked him, Jesus, Give us this bread. We want more of what you gave us. They're hungry. You know, one thing about bread, you want more of it. It leaves you hungry. You know, uh, my, my kids have an amazing appetite. The folks here, are graciously enough to feed them for lunch. And then we got back to the hotel room no later than 4 o'clock. And they were starving. They were starving. And, and, and these people here, they wanted more of this bread that Jesus gave them. Th think about this. They, they saw the miracles. They listened to Jesus' teachings. They saw how Jesus healed the sick in their midst. They saw the miracle of five loaves, two fishes, feeding the thousands of people. And they missed it all. They missed it all. And, and Jesus had to teach them like Jesus teaches us. He's so gracious to teach us. He's so faithful to teach us. And the Bible says that Jesus responded to them and let them know. And I'll, I'll read a couple verses here. And this is Jesus' response to them when they said, we want more bread. He says, verily, verily, I say unto you, Ye seek me, not because ye saw the miracles, but because ye did eat of the loaves, and ye were filled. Labor not for the meat which perisheth, but for the meat which endureth unto everlasting life, which the Son of Man shall give unto you, for him had God the Father sealed. You know, uh, I brought a couple of loaves of bread here. I don't know how long these are going to be good for. I bought them this afternoon, but probably not for long. You know, this bread is not meant to last. This bread will soon perish. If we leave it alone and we don't eat it, you're probably not going to want to eat it by Tuesday. I don't know the quality of it. I just bought at Walmart, so... I'm not sure how good, good that is. But uh, the point here is, you know, all of us are seekers. You know, the world is seekers. Everybody's seeking for something. Everybody wants something that satisfies. And Jesus here is we're telling them, if we seek after this bread, it won't satisfy. It won't last very long. And yet, people in this world, they seek after this bread, thinking that it will satisfy them, thinking that it will nourish them, thinking that it will keep them. And Jesus is saying here, this will not satisfy you, but I am the true bread. I am the bread of life. And you know, so many people, they, they run after the things of this world, 
You never can satisfy a spiritual thirst with a material thing. And each one of us are made with a spiritual thirst and a hunger in our hearts. And the only thing that can satisfy that is a spiritual thing. And that is the bread of life. You know, I thought of Solomon. He had it all. He prayed for wisdom and God gave him wisdom. But you think about that. What, what was afforded to him as being uh, King David's son, growing up in the palace, had all these things that you would have thought this man would have been satisfied. And when he became things, he gave himself to all these things, thinking that seeking after the meaning and purpose of life. Solomon suffered that. We're not any different. We all want to know the meaning and purpose of life. Don't you? That's why we're here. And these people, they were seeking the meaning and purpose of life. And here Jesus was right there with them. Jesus is the meaning and purpose of life. He is the bread of life. And, and Solomon poured himself into this. He, he poured himself into learning and gaining knowledge and wealth and things and building. And at the end of his life, he found out that it's all vanity. It's all void. It's all nothing. It didn't satisfy him. And yet people today, they're doing the same thing. They're running here and there, young people, thinking that if I could only do that, if I can only achieve that, if I can only have that, then I will be happy. And you know what? You will be happy for a moment of time. And then once again, you will hunger again. That thing will not satisfy you. Whatever you think it is, the only thing that satisfies is the Lord. The only thing that is the true bread of life is Jesus. Jesus satisfies our souls. Jesus is the one we seek. And I love this thing. I love to seek the Lord. It's a privilege to seek him. It really is. I'm thankful that, you know, as you get older, you, you have history with the Lord. And you can point to the things in the past, the times in the past that you sought the Lord. You know, and I thank you, Brother Randy, for bringing it up. And since he brought it up, I got a follow up. It was in 2001. In the spring, late spring of 2001, that we had a youth retreat at Seaside in Oregon, the young people did. And by then, I was one of the chaperones. I was saved and sanctified, and I was enjoying my Christianity. I was enjoying my walk with the Lord. But you know, at that youth retreat, they challenged the young people to commit our ways to the Lord, to be more committed in our service to God, commit to seek the Lord for our deeper experiences. And you know, the Lord began to speak to my heart. That, that youth retreat was for me. And you know what? The Lord helped me. I didn't even know how to really seek for the Lord. But the Lord helped me every step of the way. And it began with the hunger it began with the hunger and a realization that I needed more of God in my life. There was something lacking. I needed more of God. And we were challenged to seek the Lord. And you know, the Lord is so faithful to help us. He's faithful to take you from where you're at right now to where you can be walking out of this meeting tonight. Filled with what he wants for you and what he has for you. And the Lord helped me. He took me from that place where I didn't even know where to begin. And, and, and it would take a little bit of time. A lot of consecrations. A lot of times between the Lord and I. There are close times. You know, I, I ran from 
the call to preach for years. I did, and I wasted a lot of time, eight years. From my new, I didn't tell anybody, didn't, tell, didn't even tell my wife after we got married. But at that camp meeting in 2001, the middle of Sunday, I can take you to the very spot, and it was all the Lord. The Lord took me from where I was at to that point. He's so faithful to get us to a place, and he got me to a place. And I'm so thankful that on that Sunday, that I can take you to the very spot, and the very time the Lord came through and the Lord poured out his Holy Spirit in my life. I'm so thankful for that time. I'm thankful that we don't have to just seek. We don't have to just seek. You can seek with the purpose, the purpose that you will find. When you seek with all your heart, the Lord will come through. You don't have to doubt God. His word, he keeps every single time. If you seek, you will find. If you ask, the Bible says, it shall be given unto you. If you knock, it shall be opened unto you. The Bible tells us in the Revelation that we, God has set an open door before us. He set an open door before us. He's the bread. He says, I am. Remember who God is. This is the, the same I am that he used when he spoke to Moses from that burning bush. He says, I am. That encompasses everything. When you're talking about the I am, the I am is here tonight. Who is he to you? Is he the I am? Do you believe that if you seek the Lord, you will find? Do you believe that if you seek to be sanctified, that you will be sanctified tonight? That if you are sanctified and you're seeking for your baptism, that you will be baptized tonight? Do you believe that? He'll do it. He, it's his word. And here, let me read this, because he ends with an invitation. Jesus says, I am the bread of life. He that cometh. He that cometh, and he says, he that cometh to me shall, shall, not might, not maybe, not tonight, oh, just wait for tomorrow, oh, just wait for the next special meetings. No, he that cometh, here's the invitation, if you come to God, whatever your need is, he says, he that cometh to me shall Never hunger. You shall be filled. You will be filled. And it can happen tonight. You folks, you took Brother Peter's word. You from Portland, I'm going to be watching on the camera. Make sure you, you're still sitting up here in the front when I watch your meetings. It's nerve wracking. You guys are too close. But I believe you're hungry for God. And I know the Lord has a meaning and a purpose for each one of you. He has a calling for each one of you. And you know, you, you think of what, what is young people, they, what do you seek after? What is the fulfillment in your life? And, and probably it varies by ages here, what those answers would be. It does, because a 14-year-old and a 23-year-old seeking different things. But you know what? No matter how old you are, no matter how old you are, you can receive from the Lord tonight. Amen. You're not too young, and you're not too old. God has something for you. He shall fill you tonight. We're going to pray. Believe God. He is the bread of life. You know, nobody that has put in their trust in the Lord, that I know. Nobody that has sought the Lord with all their heart has not received from the Lord. We all go the same way. 
It takes the same consecrations. It takes the same thing. And you know what? The, the devil beat me up for years because I was trying to figure out how I was going to receive it, how I was going to do it on my own. You know, and I, and I heard somebody say, we all go the same way. It takes the same thing. When you seek the Lord with all your heart, you'll find him. He'll give you the desire of your heart. What is your desire tonight? Is it to be more like Jesus? Is it an experience? And you need it. You need that experience. That's what settles you and grounds you in the gospel is to be saved and sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost. It's the gift of God. And God tonight is on his giving hand. We're going to sing 270. Don't sing. Come and pray. Let God fill you tonight. He shall do it tonight.